and welcome back to Reykjavik Newscast. My name is Josie Gatins. I'm a journalist with the Reykjavik Grapevine. It's uh, another grey day in Reykjavik, unfortunately. We had this beautiful sunny day yesterday that I really wanted to show you, but back to normal programming, I guess. We've got a really special edition of the newscast today. We're not actually going to talk about news, really. We're going to talk to you about cultural events in Reykjavik and beyond that you might want to check out if you're visiting us. Uh, and we've got an exciting guest as well. So let's get to it. and event coordinator at the Reykjavik Grapevine. And this is Zoe. I know that lots of people have been missing Polly content, but you might not know we have two office dogs. We do. And uh, Zoe and Polly have a very funny relationship where Zoe adores her and Polly's like, who is this person? Um, but it's so much fun having, having dogs in the office and we knew that you were missing having dog content. So we thought that we would bring Zoe on our walk with us today. Yeah, and she's wearing a lot of pace as well, especially truly, for this occasion. Truly authentic Icelandic <laughs> yeah. dog. Um, yeah. But we brought him on because we want to talk to you about cultural events and happenings, things that are going on in Reykjavik and in Iceland. We get a lot of questions on YouTube and, and emails and stuff saying, you know, I'm coming to Iceland this month in the summer. What can I see? What's going on? Zoe, well, Zoe's really desperate to show you this place. Yeah. This is Idno. Um, and you used to work here, Kim. I did used to work here, yeah. It's uh, the <laughs> oldest theatre in the country, built in 1897. So it's been around for a very, very long time. And um, the building has changed, of course, throughout the years. But they recently restored the floors back to its original state. Oh, wow, okay. And the bar has moved many times, but now it's also back to where it used to be originally. So, if you are uh, from Reykjavik or Iceland, we came to Ithno uh, back in the day, because the bar was in this location for a long time, you might remember it here. But you can see they have this beautiful traditional paintwork throughout and they have lots of events here. There's obviously some kind of meal that's going to be going on here later, but there's lots of cultural activities that happen here and lots of festivals use this. But it's even if, uh, you know, definitely check out their website, see what's going on while you're in town. Yeah. Even if there's nothing going on, come and have lunch here because it's... Uh, Really, they serve really good food, really good coffee, and also beautiful view as well yeah, over the lake, right next to the pond. Um, and yeah, it's just one of one of the nicest spots in town. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we we want to talk to you uh, about you know what goes on in in, uh, in places like Ithno and uh, other cultural events that are going on. And some of the things that we're going to talk about have already happened this year, but we want to let you know about them in case you're planning a trip for next summer and the coming years. Um, yeah. And so the first thing that we wanted to mention was Reykjavik Art Festival. Um, Listahalti. Listahalti yeah. in Icelandic. So this has already taken place this year, from the 1st to the 19th of June. Um, and it is a festival that it's, it's uh, I never know, it's like Biennale? I don't know how to say it. Yeah, once every two years, yeah, basically. Yeah, once every two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's not going to take place in, in 2023, as far as we know. But keep an eye on my website, um, and it should come back in 2024. Yeah, and the cool thing I think about the festival is, is that it's not just art. It's no. also music yes. and culture. For All example, um, Emiliana Torini did a concert at Harpa with the Colorist Orchestra. Yeah, uh, I didn't get a chance to see that and I'm very disappointed because she's amazing. Same. Definitely worth checking out, but I did manage to catch quite a few things that were going on and they used Ithno as a venue a lot uh, as they're kind of, they, they run a kind of cultural hub where they have takeovers that go on there. There was like wild things going on, uh, a really... Uh, great choir did a takeover in Ithno yeah. and then this um, kids group which in English are called Kidarchy I can't remember what they're called in Icelandic they did a takeover on the 17th of June which is the 
uh, the, like the national day of Iceland, a really important day. And uh, as part of the takeover, there were kids giving haircuts, kids giving tattoos. Um, that was a day. Yeah, was a t- <laughs> we, we know some people who got tattoos from 11-year-olds, and yeah. it was a wild time. But yeah. there's all kinds of things. That, that's a, the, the wonderful thing about Lista Hattiv. But the Reykjavik Ice Festival is that it's so diverse. It's Anything so is possible, broad. basically. Yeah, and it's uh, definitely worth, um, if you're thinking about coming around that time of year, planning a trip around that. Um, and then the next thing that happens immediately after uh, Lista Houses normally, um, and it, it did this year, is the Fringe Festival. Oh, I love Fringe. They celebrated their fifth birthday this year. Yes. It's a like a real labor of love. The team who put it together are amazing. It's a very small team with uh, a lot of volunteer support. And they, what they managed to put on, I think there was like 100 different acts and then like 200 individual performances yeah. over 10 days this year. Yeah, it was yeah. the 24th of June to the 3rd of July. And the theme was love as well. The theme was love. It's really beautiful. Um, so for that, expect a lot of comedy, uh, burlesque. Circus acts, Circus right? Circus acts. Uh, physical theatre, often like kind of smaller shows. Have you ever been to Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, which is where this one was, uh, which was what inspired? That's where it started, yeah. yeah. Um, you'll know the sort of thing to expect, but it's really, I mean, it, it, it can kind of be a bit overwhelming sometimes because you can go from, you know, the, the performances are kind of back to back in different venues and you can go from like seeing like really emotional dance piece to like laughing at a comedian to like seeing some really weird theater yeah. things that you don't quite understand yeah but it's so fun it can be a roller coaster but i also love that they emphasize that it's a very safe space yes everyone is welcome no matter religion <laughs> sexuality <laughs> including any kind of act basically yeah. so yeah. it's very diverse totally so uh, it's, it's really fantastic um, and definitely one to, to think about seeing if you're in town at the same time. It's got like, it really feels like a festival as well. Like yeah. even though all the events happen in different venues, it kind of, if you're part of that, uh, if, if you're going to shows and you kind of like tap into that experience, you really feel like you're part of the community and the buzz yeah. of what's going on. And you take over the whole city as well. So it's kind of like you're, you're just in the middle of it. Yeah, so absolutely. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're actually walking towards, because we wanted to show you some of these venues as well, so we're walking towards Charnabio right now. Um, and it's, uh, again, another like quite old theatre. Was it, I think it was yeah. a movie theatre originally, do you know? I'm not sure. It's definitely, I know that it's been here for a very long time, and it's one of the venues that uh, uh, a lot of, uh, puts on a lot of fringe fringe shows. So we yeah. just wanted to, to show you where things are. This is uh, the City Halls, by the way. Um, so we're just kind of walking around around the pond um, to show you Chang Nabio. And I also love this place because they don't only show bigger productions, but mm-hmm. also give you know smaller um, ensembles a chance yes. to have their production there. I saw like the weirdest two uh, performer, I think Swedish physical. The weirdest. It was so weird. <laughs> so weird. So great. This is Chang Nabio here. Uh, and yeah, so I saw in here this this like very odd but really cool uh, physical theatre piece during Fringe. And then I also saw Ari Elkvans here, who yeah. uh, is you know if you if you're aware of Icelandic comedy at all, um, you may have seen his special on on Netflix. And he was actually trying out a new special, which was really cool. Um, he was just doing like a work in progress show, but yeah, I expect it'll be I don't know if it'll be on Netflix again, but. Uh, I expect it's going to be somewhere for people to see soon. I think he's taking it to Edinburgh, a fringe festival as well. So this is beautiful Charn de Bio. They have a lovely bar as well, so yeah. you can also come here if you want to work on your laptop for an hour or just grab a drink. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Uh, Even but, Zoe loves it. I She's know. like, We can't go inside unfortunately just now, but it's got a really nice uh, kind of conservatory feeling in, in yeah. the inside of the bar. Yeah, it's glass really, ceiling kind yeah. of? Yeah, yeah. It's, Plans. It's, it's totally beautiful. Perfect, yeah. And then here are some things as well that are coming up uh, that you might still have time to see if you're coming to Iceland this year. So we've got Inipukin. Um, this is from the 28th to the 31st of July, so coming up pretty soon. Um, and this happens on the, the same uh, weekend. There's like 
a long weekend and there's a lot of festivals that take place. Yeah, is it called Neighbours Weekend? I think so. It's, it's essentially, it's like Icelandic Labour Day, but it's, yeah. it's basically like the, kind of directly translates, I think, is like Shopkeeper's Day. Um, so, yes, yeah. that's the one, yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is that, I mean, at the same time, there's a very big festival happening at Vestmanaya yes. uh, called Thjóðhátí. Yes. And yes. that's the one where basically almost everyone tends to migrate to. Yes. But any game yeah. loosely translates to house monster. So loud, by the way. I don't know if you can hear the construction <laughs> that's going on, but Classic there's so much happening at the moment. Yeah. And the festival celebrates its 20th anniversary this year. Yes. And it's actually kind of meant for the ones who are not going to Vestmanaya. Yes, yeah, so any any Pokemon, like it, it translates literally as like house monster. House monster, yeah, house yeah, yeah. demon, yeah. Yeah. Um, Which I, I can relate to in many yeah, ways. So if you're a home bird, <laughs> if you kind of like, you're like, no, I don't want to leave Reykjavik, I want to be, I want to be here. But it's, a, it's a, you know, mostly music as yes. well, but kind of, you know, smaller, more indie acts than you would get yeah. at the big festivals. Yeah. Um, and so th this year uh, we've got Briet, uh, Gugusar, Inspector Space Time, Lake of Ikidota, like basically... Still pretty big established pretty, acts. Pretty big yeah. established acts. Like basically I would call them like grapevine darlings. These are people that we've yes. covered a lot and who are really, you know, doing interesting and cool music in Iceland. So if you want Absolutely. new bands to check out, these are the people to look out for. Yeah, and for the lazy people, uh, the two main <laughs> venues for this festival are right next to each other as well. Ideal. So it's in Gamla Bio and Rundgen. Yes. So also if the weather's bad, it takes 10 seconds to hop uh, between the two. Rundgen, who just won uh, Best Goddamn Bar in our Best of Reykjavik yeah. series for this year. So definitely one of our favorite oh, yes. venues to check out. Oh, yes. Um, and I know that, okay, yes, we've got to, there's a, there's a place that Art's indicating we have to go over here because we need to talk about another venue that is not ready yet, but Still under construction. Soon. Still under construction. <laughs> <laughs> As everything is. Um, but we also wanted to mention some things that are happening outside of Reykjavik. Yeah. Um, and this kind of covers both, actually. This is a, we wanted to talk about this community uh, called Pulse Driving. I have um, so much love for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They are fantastic and they essentially are a collective of musicians uh, working together to kind of um, create, release and promote music, put on shows, but in quite a different way, in a much more community feeling way. Yeah, and I think it's really beautiful because they created their own grassroots scene. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I just love about Iceland. Yes. There's they, a space for, yeah. Could they? they have this attitude, which is, uh, they call it DIT, do it together. Um, and you, you can really feel this in effect in particular at the festival that they run. So Post Reifing are, are, are mostly Reykjavik based and they have a venue here called Post Trusit. But uh, they also run this festival, um, which is called Hautithni, and that takes place in Borðari, which is like... Uh, is it in the northeast of Iceland? Yeah, it's... Uh, no, northwest. Northwest? It's like Joke. just at the base of, of the West Fjords. Okay, is this the spot, Art? Further, okay. <laughs> almost there. Uh, almost there. Um, there's, uh, basically, we're, we want to tell you about this... Uh, this new space that's going to open up, but because it's not open yet, I'm t not completely sure of, of the location. Um, but just to finish off about post rifing they have been responsible for some of our favorite artists over the last few years have, been, have come out of this community. They provide a lot of support uh, for artists and they do incredible concerts. So whether or not you can make it to How Tisney, um or if you can you know, catch one of their concerts at... Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, post Tusev in Reykjavik, they are a, a really good organization. Yeah. I'm not even sure you call it an organization. Collective, Collective. I think. Collective. Yeah. Um, uh, who are, yeah, who are encouraging amazing music and amazing cultural outputs at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, and also happening outside of Reykjavik is Lunga. Oh, Lunga in Seydesfjordur. It's in the east of Iceland. Yeah. Oh, I think this is the this place. Is it. Okay. Oh, we're, being, we're, we're getting lots of eyebrows from art. Okay, so I'll tell you what I know about this place, which is quite
quite limited. But basically, uh, we're, we're now we've just passed through Parliament, um, and uh, this is a new hotel that will be opening quite soon. But it's built on the location of like a really iconic. Icelandic venue. NASA. NASA. Oh yeah. my goodness. If you ask any Icelander about NASA, they will have stories. Yeah. So there was like loads of big gigs that happened here back in the day. And then it, it was ultimately uh, demolished. This, this got this new hotel, which has been, you know, really beautifully kind of, I don't know, it looks very authentic, doesn't it? It looks it kind of old, but it's really yeah. new. It, it it's yeah. like fits in with the, with the, the kind of landscape and the architecture really well. But excitingly, they have also built another venue. They're kind of taking NASA and putting it back to life. And what they've done to make that all work is that it's going to be in the basement. It's going to be underground. So once again, we're going to have really big concerts happening just outside Parliament, right in the middle of, of downtown Reykjavik, which is super cool. It's going to be yeah. really exciting. Um, so yeah, so look out for that. Uh, that will be coming soon. But going back to Lunga, I've actually never been. Have you managed to make it over? I went last year mm -hmm. and it was so much fun. It's basically just really artsy. It has lectures, it has workshops. Um, I think at the end of the week, um, it ends with like just a big party weekend, basically. Yeah. And there is nature, you can swim in the lake, the sunsets are beautiful, just the whole community feeling is so wonderful. I think what's really commendable about uh, the east of Iceland, about Seyðsfjörður and, and, and some other towns around there, is they have their own completely independent art scene. Yes. Nothing to do with what's happening in Reykjavik. Lots of people, uh, when I was uh, still working in the arts in Scotland, I know lots of people who came to Iceland specifically just to go to Sagesphere. They didn't spend any time in Reykjavik, didn't connect with anything that's going on here and just went there. I never understood it until I went there. Yeah. So Lunga oh, has, has taken place uh, another for this dog. year. Dog. Let's you see if hello. they can get along. <laughs> it's Zoe. <laughs> Zoe's She's got some big opinions. Very excited. Aww. <laughs> Good Zoe. <laughs> and makes her day. Yeah, and the great thing about Lunka as well is that they have a Lunka school. Okay, so tell me a bit about this because I didn't know about this until you yeah. told me about so it today. Yeah, so it's an independent artist-led institution uh, and I think you can apply for it. Okay. Um, and they experiment with artistic practice as a way of doing, mm. thinking and being in order to cultivate, Ooh, I like the sound disturb, of that. distort and transform notions of aesthetics, learning, perception, and good judgment. Ooh. That's a whole mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> but it's another amazing example of how a small community community over there can create such an amazing concept, you mm -hmm. know, that's still so accessible to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think what they do over there is amazing. Um, so Lunka has happened this year. It's between the 10th and 17th of July it took place. But again, something to think about to, if you're maybe doing a ring road trip or something, uh, then yeah, look, in, look into going, going there next year. Um, and some, something that is in town, but it's kind of, uh, it's outside of downtown Reykjavik. Um, and uh, <laughs> is uh, it's always very uh, bothering the birds. Um, and it's, it's really kind of up and coming in terms of culture in, in the art scene and the cultural scene in Reykjavik is this venue slash collective called Fush. Oh. Um, they are doing incredible things. It takes in a, a bunch of different artists, um, including uh, Kroth og Kvass, who are a duo who work a lot with uh, kind of typology forms. Iceland has this really ancient form of, of typology that's to do with hand carving. So beautiful. Um, and they do uh, yeah, really, really amazing stuff with that. Um, and they're part of this collective where they've been given by the city this huge uh, warehouse. Um, and it's in Gulnes, so it's like outside of, of downtown, but still Within the, capital, within the capital area. And they, uh, they ran an amazing festival this year that's already taken place called Rush Fest or Rubbish Festival. To go over here, show them a couple more places. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this was an amazing kind of arts and design festival that took place. And it ended up actually with an amazing, super cool 
rave event, uh, which is called Buxu, um, and uh, it's kind of like this this highlight of the of the year in terms of events. Uh, it's incredible. Like they had the most amazing DJs, so much going on, and uh, if you manage to see what Fush got up to, keep an, uh, keep an eye on their Instagram and their Facebook. Um, and if you like kind of collaborative, collective art movements, they are definitely the one for you. So we're, we're actually outside a couple of cool venues as well. This is Hura. Hura was like this iconic uh, Reykjavik institution and it closed down a few years ago and then there were multiple things that took over and now it's back. So it's super exciting to have Hura back Thank with us. Thank goodness. And here's Gaukarin, right next door. Uh, and yeah, Gaukarin is kind of, it's known as like a home for like uh, burlesque and drag and just kind of alternative culture. Uh, it, it, it supports a lot of queer culture. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you're looking for, for really cool, <laughs> Zoe, what are you doing? This is the way home for Zoe, so she's like, <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> yeah, it, it's brilliant. Um, and so, yeah, just to mention a couple more venues as well. Oh, Zoe, so you okay? Um, to check out in Reykjavik, especially if you're looking for live music, uh, Kex is a really good one. Love Kex. It's a hostel, yep. a venue, and a bar with a great view and a great event lineup. It like, looks right over the, right over the sea the bay uh, right over to Essian, the, the mountain across uh, from Reykjavik. Yeah. Uh, but it also puts on like really amazing, interesting cultural events um, and really good gigs. So we def definitely recommend checking, checking out Kex. Lovely vibe as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And we also wanted to mention Mengi. Mengi is like a small kind of arts venue. Yeah, art is run as well, I Yes, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they often put on really interesting visiting uh visiting artists um we're kind of there's lots of construction here so i'm just working out where the best route is this way i think this may sure. be close this is a dead end yeah, i think we have let's to go, go around this way Art. around the fence um, that's the lovely part about downtown <laughs> there's construction everywhere especially in the summer like there's obviously limited time of year to get things done with decent weather so summer is pretty crazy for construction in reykjavik um, but uh, just to, to finish off as well with a, with a couple more um, festivals and events that take place outside of Reykjavik, we have Northern Punk, which is ha taking place the 29th to the 31st of July. Um, and this is, is really fun. I mean, it, it really takes in all genres, but it kind of focuses on metal, punk, like heavier music, I would say. Yeah. But I mean, you really do find a bit of everything there. And again, it's a, it's a very like collective, uh, warm community that kind of get together to put on this event. Everybody feels part of it. So if you go, you might end up I don't staying know. Yes. forever. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you might end up being like, oh, I'll just help out building this bonfire or I'll just like, I'll be the person who picks up the litter. Like you never know, yeah. you might end up part of the community in, in different ways. Um, they really encourage people getting involved like that. Um, and the other one is uh, Land Fokkiv. Oh, it's loud. A loud helicopter going past. Another joy of living in downtown <laughs> in Reykjavik. There's just like planes and helicopters going all the time. But um, Land Fokkiv, greatest is slime. Yeah, humans think, become slime. Humans become slime. Or MBS, as it's yeah. also sometimes known. Yeah. Um, this is a, a really fun festival, music festival, that normally takes place, place in Akureyri, in the north of Iceland, sometimes called the, the northern capital of Iceland. Yeah. Ah, Zoe! It's okay. So many things to eat, so many things to smell. Got it? Yeah, and I think in Akureyri is where their headquarters are. Yes. But this time they are having it in an industrial space in the East Fjords. Yeah, so they've basically outgrown the location that they were in before. And yeah. so they're, they're trying out a new space. So another one to kind of keep an eye on. Um, and then, of course, uh, we also have uh, the, the biggest festival that probably people will know about when they're thinking of Iceland. 
and the name's is just it, gone straight out of my head. Is it Airwaves? Airwaves! Airwaves! Like, uh, Northern? No, Airwaves. That's it. Airwaves. Iceland Airwaves. Iceland Airwaves. Yes. Um, and so, uh, this is a, a really amazing festival and you may have heard about it before. We've featured artists uh, uh, who have been playing there. We often do collaborations with them. Incredible festival. Multi-venue festival. It takes place in... November? Yeah, the yes. first week of November. And the festival has changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But this year it's going to be three days. And I think the main venue, probably as, as almost always, will be Harpa yes. again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's a, there's, a, there's a full range of things that are happening in the summer and beyond uh, in Reykjavik and in Iceland. Um, there's, it's almost like too much to mention, as always. Yeah. But that hopefully gives you a flavour, and we're going to put links to everything in the description. Um, but that's basically everything from us for now. I wanted to show you a couple of things before uh, before we finish up. And the first of first of all is, of course, our uh, Best of Iceland magazine, which just came out. Um, it's totally amazing. So if you want to. Um, if you want to order a copy, you can get it in our shop, shop.grapevine.is. It's really great if you are interested in the sort of things that we're talking about oh, and yes. you want to know more about what you can do if you're travelling around Iceland. And we also have Best of Reykjavik as well, which is specific for the city. And uh, <laughs> if you're wondering what Zoe has been eating, she loves these cod and lobster combo bites, which you can also get in the shop. There's a section of the shop called Polly's Corner, uh, and this is where she has all of her particular picks, all of their pet things. And finally, da -da -da -da. Ah. I'm going to bash my mic doing this. If you want t-shirts, we sell t-shirts and they're great, they're super comfy, they're cozy, they're very stylish. Absolutely. Do I look stylish? Yes, always, Josie, you know Thank that. You. Anyway, that's everything from me and Kim. Thanks uh, for tuning in. Yeah, and hopefully you get to see some of these amazing cultural things that are going on in Iceland. Uh, we'll be with you again next week. Yes. Bye all. What is Zoe? We're going home. No, we're going for lunch. She's like more snacks on the floor, maybe. <laughs> Love. Oh, nay, Zoe. Love nay, nay. floor snacks. <laughs> oh, and <no. laughs> <laughs> that's a whole hot dog. Oh my goodness, Kotte. What a lucky dog. What oh, a lucky day. Oh my, I think she would be obese if it wouldn't be for us humans <laughs> making her stop. <laughs>